oh my God, that was the most arrogant thing I have heard anybody say. Yeah. And it came out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. Look at all that I could be doing. And God mm -hmm. just so sweetly said, don't ever think that it's anything that you do for me, right. but what I can do on the inside of yeah, you. Right. I've been in the church my whole life. I mean, I started going to church when I was in utero. So I can wrap a verse around stuff or use language to make it sound spiritual but my heart can be so selfish and so far from God oh, yeah. in the moment. Yeah. And I, I just, I feel like I have learned in the second half of my life, what am I really gunning for here? Mm -hmm. Because I can, I can play the part and, and yeah. maybe some people will buy the fact that I'm being humble or spiritual, but God, God's not judging me by that appearance. He's judging mm -hmm. the posture of my heart. Am I really leaning into him? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think of a time where I had bad motives for something good to happen to someone else. Okay. So with my husband playing sports, playing football, like you always, the dream is that it's the Super Bowl and yeah. you're down by seven yeah. and you're going to get the ball and, you know, it's going to go and Benjamin's in the end zone and he's going <laughs> to catch it. And then it's like, every, like we win because he caught the right. winning touchdown. Right. It's like always those moments where you're like, I want, I was like, God, he loves you. Yeah. Like he would yeah. use this he for you. And he would pray in the end zone. Yeah, he would lean yeah. down and like give you all, like this would be Justify awesome. Yes, like yeah, people maybe. would just drop to their <laughs> knees and follow you yeah. because he, you know, it's like this idea that like just do it for him right. in this way. Yeah. And I think about that the motive was so, so wrong. Mm -hmm. um, but it was for someone else to get the glory and then use, it's like, you know, you, yeah. you just put God at, at the end yeah. of it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I just realized like that. And then the way he used Benjamin was in something completely different mm -hmm. that had nothing to do with football. And it was just a reminder, like, I'll use what I want. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll use the smallest thing. I'll yeah. use the internet. It doesn't have to be this. Like, just mm -hmm. do what I said to do, right? Yeah, right? Just live and be, and I will use whatever I see fit. Yeah. Yeah. And so it was just a reminder. I think about all those prayers and all those games. I'm just like, oh, mm -hmm. you didn't even use that. Wow. And so God will use anything. So yeah. his ways are higher than our yeah. ways. Yeah. <laughs> That's not, yeah. I have told this story over and over, but it's so applicable in so many areas of the time that we were up in Los Angeles. We were making films and we would raise money to do a film and then we'd market it and then we'd fund most of it to try to get it into theaters and then it'd be great and then start all over again you know yeah. we were doing one at a time and it was just a grind and so it was kind of feast or famine you know you've yeah. got 400 people on staff and then you go back down to 10 and then you go back so it was a lot but learning so much in that time and um I just remember it was in one of those famine times of just we've got this building that God's miraculously given us to do all this from, you know, it was yeah. that old Hanna-Barbera studios. And, and, and that day I had given all of my jewelry, everything to my husband. He was going to take it down to pay staff. Wow. And I was just like, I was so tired. I was just, mm. you know, and I walked out the side of my house all my dogs, <laughs> and, and I said out loud, I said, God, if you could just keep us from scrambling so hard, mm -hmm. look at all that we could be doing, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was going to say doing for you, mm -hmm. and before, and I was talking out loud, it was like God hit me in the gut with mm -hmm. the most precious two by four, mm -hmm. and I just kind of slowed down my words, look at all that and I was thinking I was doing it out of a good motivation. Yeah. I mean, my, yeah. I felt my heart was right. We would be doing more films. We would be, and, and I thought for a second, and I thought, oh my God, that was the most arrogant thing I have heard anybody say. Yeah. And it came out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. Look at all that I could be doing. And God mm -hmm. just so sweetly said, don't ever think that it's anything that you do for me, right. but what I can do on the inside of yeah, you. Right. And I just dropped to my knees and I just started bawling and I just mm. said, God, 
I am so sorry. I thank you yeah, <laughs> that we get to pay our yeah. <laughs> our employees today. Yeah. I thank you. Yeah. You know, and I became I I just suddenly got grateful, but I thought, man, yeah. that was er ah, mm. and it made me sick to my stomach yeah. Yeah. that I had said, look at all that I could be doing. The motives of your heart always matter no matter where you are, no matter who you are, no matter what you do. God cares about your heart. That's what he's after. He's not after good works. He's not after, you know, be good, get good, do bad, get bad. He's not about that. He's about your heart. And um, so, yeah, I, I encourage you to, to passionately go after God wherever you find yourself today. I wanted to, as we're talking about motives, I wanted to share this, my, my favorite love story in the Old Testament besides Song of Solomon, which I love because it's like Daniel Steele, it's so spicy. <laughs> but I love the first of the minor prophets. I love the story of Hosea. Mm -hmm. And you had such an unlikely love story. And I think it fits with motive. Y'all correct me if I'm wrong. But, you know, God tells this really, really good, faithful guy to go uh, marry this really, really kind of girls gone wild girl whose number's all over the boy's locker room. And he says, I'm going to use your marriage as, as metaphor and metonym. It's going to be historical and it's going to be an illustration, a living illustration because my people have become promiscuous. And, and to me, just even God asking, and there's a lot of theological, uh, disagreement over this, but I believe Hosea was a historical character. He was a real guy in the Old Testament. But when God comes and says, Jose, you've been a really good guy. I want you to marry this really bad girl. The logic in me as a human goes, oh my heavens. If God came to me as a 58-year-old single woman and said, Lisa, you've been mostly faithful with regards to your dating life. And now I'm going to have you marry a guy who's going to rip your heart out and who's mm -hmm. not going to be faithful. Mm -hmm. I would, I think, be like, Lord, what was the deal here? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, I think I should be married, you know, some version of Billy Graham. Why am I getting like a guy who's going to rip my guts out? Mm -hmm. But what stuns me in the beginning of this story is there's just three little words. I can't remember the word. It comes from in the Hebrew, Jackie, you might. But it just says, so he went. Mm -hmm. Immediate Immediate obedience. Immediate. Wow. He doesn't equivocate. He doesn't breathe. He doesn't pray. He doesn't do like I do and sit on the porch and go, what are my motives? He mm -hmm. just, so he went. Mm -hmm. And I believe he had immediate obedience because he had such a deep relationship with God. He trusted God even when what God asked him to do was so, so out of left field. He was just like, that's my God. He told me to do this, so I'm going to do this. He um, didn't say, what's in it for me? He didn't say, what is in it for me? I love Hosea's story. Um, I love all the love stories in the Bible. I'm kind of a sucker for, for divine love stories. But there is that moment in Hosea's story that's just stunning, where God says, you're a good guy, I want you to marry a bad girl. And instead of arguing or instead of fussing or instead of holding up his resume, he just says, yes, sir. And um, I don't do that all the time. I'm, I'm learning to do that. And, and again, the key for me when it comes to immediate or, or quick obedience is being in God's Word and, and communing with God through prayer. When I'm already in His arms, I don't want to wriggle out. I want to stay as close to the Lord as I can. And so when He speaks to me, I hear it immediately and I respond immediately. If I've drifted from intimacy with God, I'm not in His Word, I'm not in the, the communion of the saints, I'm not spending time with other believers, I'm not consistently in prayer, then I don't usually obey as quickly because it's almost like His voice has become more staticky. So I think the key to obedience is intimacy with God. But that to me goes, man, if we could get to where our motive almost was immaterial, where it didn't even occur right. in the equation, you go, God said it, I'm going to do it. Yes. Um, do you think motive becomes more malleable to the Holy Spirit the longer you walk with Jesus? It should. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think. Has yours? Yes. But I would add this, which is what I've been thinking about while well, y'all have been talking is I do think that the more aware you become of your motives, the more potential you are to be self-centered mm. because wow. you're always looking down mm -hmm. yeah. and interrogating yourself, which is healthy. I, right. I think we should have an, a healthy 
curiosity about our heart, you know. Right. But I also think that the devil can yeah. use that to yeah. shame you, to mm -hmm. condemn you, because you're always going to notice something dark. Right. And so at some point it has to be, you know what, like God hears my heart. Right. I'm not going to ever see everything that's there, right. yeah. but you do and you love yeah. me still. Yeah. Right. And so give me the grace to still walk holy and give me even the joy to see myself mm. as myself, mm -hmm. but in light of how you see me yeah. so that I'm not like constantly yeah. discouraged. It reminds yeah. me of the man in scripture who is interacting with Jesus and he's like, Lord, I believe Help my own belief. Yeah. Like I know there's stuff down yeah. here that isn't yeah. what it needs to be, but I want to choose the spirit. That's yeah. right. And help me to do that. Yeah, I love right. how David said, create in me a clean heart, oh God. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't pray that if God couldn't do that. So it's really not up to us yeah. to create in me a clean heart. It's right. giving our hearts to the Lord and mm -hmm. he creates in us That's a clean right. heart. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and he takes us from that, what we would say, impure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. to the pure and holy. Yeah. And it's something that we gravitate to and it's something that we become like. Yeah. I heard a preacher say once, he said, if God showed us our hearts mm. all at once, we would be destroyed. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. So like that progressive revelation yeah. is a mercy. It is yeah. a mercy. You know, it to, to not see mercy. yourself all at once. The healthier we become in Christ, yeah. the more things come up to the surface. Right. And I think right. sometimes we think we're going backwards. It's it a setback. Right. What is this? I thought I, mm -hmm. but I do believe that the stronger we get, the stronger we are walking with Jesus, the more steady and firm. It's like, you're ready for the next yeah. level of wow. healing now. So I'm going to start bringing things to your right. attention. It doesn't okay. mean you're going back. Yeah. It's the next That's layer good. of healing. Yeah. The grooves get deeper. I, I, when I grew up, we had snail mail and you know, you'd fold a letter mm -hmm. before you'd turn on a computer, you'd fold the letter to put it in the envelope. And sometimes your, your folds would make the letter too fat to fit in the envelope. Mm -hmm. And, but you had to really pr be pur purposeful in that second fold to make it the right size to fit because it wanted to go back into those first folds. And I think of that with my heart. Sometimes there were some things that, that my heart was kind of like wet cement when I was a kid and some handprints that got made in that wet cement. God has healed me from that, but I still have the impression of that handprint. And so when it rains in my life, that handprint collects water. Mm -hmm. So I have to be very intentional about not going too deep and navel gazing and thinking about my motives, but going, okay, I'm going to choose to just follow God. He knows those handprints. Yeah. He knows all that. He knows my predisposition. And and today he called me beautiful. Yeah. And today he said, with one glance of my eyes, I captured his heart, <laughs> even though he knew I really wanted that woman to say she was sorry. Yeah. Um, man, what a good God. So you're right. I guess ultimately, if we're walking, keeping step with the yeah. spirit, there is some ease. Yeah. We buffet our bodies, yeah. but we also lean into his embrace. Yeah. yeah. And if the, if the motivation could be just being obedient. Mm -hmm. That is my that yeah. is my motivation. I will go, I will be obedient because that's mm -hmm. that's where my help comes from. Yeah. yeah. You know, if yeah. I it, and and it draws me near to God. It, yeah. Which is why I it's think the, the right of Hebrews is like, look, lay aside every weight. Yeah. Right. That's all you can That's right. Looking, Looking right. at yeah. Jesus. Right. right? Yeah. And I, I right. think for me that's that's been the only place that I can look. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because where else am I going to go? Yeah.